Hello, Superior YMCA. I am Jen, your Health and Wellness Director, and I am here with Ashley and Jill. How are we doing this morning, ladies? Good. Good. As you can see, it's nice, bright, and sunny outside. Um, you'll probably be getting this video out tomorrow, but knowing that yesterday was a beautiful day, hopefully you guys get out and enjoy it a little bit, or did enjoy it a little bit. Um, Today we have another wellness talk for you. Um, our topic today is compound versus isolated exercises. We're going to kind of go through the definitions of each one, the benefits of each one, which ones we like the most, um, what we kind of implement into our workouts and our fitness classes, and just create a little topic about that. So um, ladies, before I say my definitions here, obviously compound versus isolated, we can kind of think in our brain, one's using multiple muscle groups and joints at a time, the other one is just isolated using one. Um, I think when we do our classes, we really work a lot more with compound movements because we are in a short time frame and we want to make it as efficient as possible. Um, there's a time and place for both, as is with every um, versus topic that we've talked about. So um, really quickly here, I'll just run through the definitions and then we'll kind of break them down. Um, isolation exercises are movements that target a specific muscle group and make use of only one joint. So like your biceps in a bicep curl as an example, which we'll go over more examples as we go through here. Um, compound exercises utilize multiple muscle groups and joints. So um, Ashley, I'll pick on you here first. Obviously, um, I think we all kind of know there's, a, we're going to say there's a time and place for each one, but um, in your workouts and classes that you um, structure, what do you kind of lean more towards and why? Um, I think I definitely lean more towards the compound movements. And one of the biggest reasons for that for me is because you're engaging your core the whole time that way. So when we're doing, you know, a bicep curl, we're really not getting much out of it except for the bicep right versus like compound movements we can get like I said the core strength and stability which I think is huge because that's something we need for our everyday lives but also like the cardio output's going to be higher um, you're going to burn more fat you're going to burn more calories than if you're just sitting there and it's going to take you like you said less time which in our classes you know sometimes they're only 30 or 45 minutes or 40 minutes so to be able to get the most out of your workout I think is why you know, I would lean that route unless I'm really looking for specific, you know, gains in a really certain area. How about you, Jill, when you're kind of structuring some of your classes? I know we do, you teach a little bit more cardio based, but that still is kind of a good example of using compound movements and cardio versus, you know, um, like I think of combinations, like when I do like circuit, I'll do, you know, combination exercises built in together. I always burn more calories opposed to just like doing jumping jacks, even though you're using a lot of muscle joints and stuff, doing a jumping jack. So that kind of might be a bad example, but um, what do you kind of lean more towards and why? I think I, I lean more towards the compound, but I know there's probably a little bit of isolation just thrown in there, but more or less it's the compound because like Ashley said, it engages your core and everything and, you know, just being able to keep that active while you're still like doing like, you know, your upper body and your lower body. So I just like incorporating the compound. That's probably my go-to. I like that it is like more bang for your buck in a short period of time. Um, some of the benefits here of like the compound exercises are that they're efficient. Um, they do burn more calories. They make you stronger. So they say, they say, we're back to these things like that. Um, and they also help improve your coordination, which I think is really huge with a lot of our demographics that come. So especially again, with silver sneakers, we want to improve not just silver sneakers, but just they do focus a lot more on coordination and balance. But I think in the rest of our classes too, that's super important because um, I know not only silver sneakers struggle with coordination, right, Jill? Um, yep. <laughs> I don't want to pick on you. There's certain oh, I, things I that you're just, that some things like just connect and then there's others that are like, okay, wait a minute, what was that? I think it's good to challenge your brain just as much as your body. Um, so that's kind of fun about those compound exercises. Um, anything we want to add to that, like the benefits of those compound exercises? Well, I think you get more out of it too. Like if I go tell you to do a bicep curl, you can just kind of mindlessly do that for a minute or however long but if I tell you oh you need to do a bicep curl 
overhead press tricep extension, you think a little bit more about it and then your mind is more engaged and then that actually makes your muscles work harder because you're mentally focusing on it. And then like mm -hmm. the, the nerves that connect your brain to your muscles, they're going to get a better signal. They're going to get stronger than if you're just like do 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 and doing kind of your own thing. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's what I like about it too, is you're very much more in the present of what you're doing. Um, I think that's a good reminder in all aspects of our life. And we've kind of talked about that with yoga is that you're so in tune with what's going on in your body at that time. Um, it makes that workout definitely um, a little bit better for you too. So I feel like you have to watch how your form is because you're changing movements. Um, you really have to engage, like you said, your core significantly. Um, I like that it helps you almost enjoy your workout a little bit more. It's kind of weird. Instead of just going and going into autopilot and getting on a treadmill, or like you said, going and lifting biceps for like a minute, being done and moving on to the next thing, you're really like putting more effort into it and kind of making yourself, it's like a self-care, like you're making your workout more of a priority, um, which you get better results from too. Right. But I gotta say, from when I first started personal training, like when I was, had a personal trainer, I could not, I had to start out in like the isolation movements. So I could get my form down properly and, you know, build up to doing those, you know, multi- joint movements and things like that because if I would have started right out of the gate doing compound movements I probably would have hurt myself or like you know been super sore or something like that so like yeah for me and like probably for some people that just have never worked out probably not a good idea to hop right into compound but but eventually like it didn't take me very long to you know get those compound movements I was very bad, very shaky, and, mm -hmm. you know, not the greatest form, but with practice, like, it just, it got better, so I had to start out with isolation, mm -hmm. but now I prefer compound by far. I think a good example of that would be, like, in our, our RIP classes, um, and for any of those of you that are listening that come to RIP or have come to RIP, um, a good example is that clean and press. I mean, there's so many of us that do that clean and press, not 100% the right way, um, <clears throat> but you can do an upright row, and you can do an overhead press the right way, but putting them together makes it a little bit more complicated. Um, I think too with the compound exercises, they do get some momentum moving through those exercises because you're changing your body position. Um, so sometimes we have a tendency to want to lift heavier because you can throw your body weight into like you know, press and lift it um, when still you want it controlled, um, stable, and keeping that movement correct, like you said too, with that proper form. Um, I know it's a lot, again, with that clean and press as an example. We used to teach this class years ago when RIP first came out, um, like seven years ago now probably, and um, we did like a, like RIP 101, and we like broke down like a clean and press, and it was super hard. We had like five people in there, but, and there was like four of us instructors that were literally like helping people through that process, mm -hmm. and it was hard to wrap your brain around it, um, and once you get it, like you just get that form instantly. But a lot of it is a reverse bicep curl and up. And instead of having like a complete upright row and just rotating your elbows under to do your press, um, just causes some challenge for your shoulders by doing that reverse row over and over again. But um, yeah, so that's kind of a good example where I can see like when you're not as comfortable with the exercise like you're just going to be like I'm gonna I have to do this and then this I don't care how I get there but I got to get it to my chest and I have to get it up there however that might be and that's where you might be doing it wrong and I mean in a classroom setting too you have a choreography to match so then you're trying to match the pace of the music mm -hmm. which makes it even that much harder too so um yeah so I do feel like compound exercises are still good for beginners but you just need to have a little bit more um more focus in yourself to know what you're doing. Um, and that's where the instructor comes in to help you and just say like, hey, just, you know, all those constant reminders about form um, as well. But isolation exercises now benefits for those. Um, if you want to target and work on a specific area of your body, that's gonna be like the best situation, right? To isolate that muscle group. 
Um, I thought this was interesting though, because a lot of us in this industry, we do struggle with injuries. We have a lot of people ask us about injuries and how to prevent them or how to heal them once they've happened. Um, so doing isolation exercises helps with injury recovery because you can still work out and target a different muscle group, not the one that you actually have injured. So I'm not saying that that's always successful. I think any of us that are like live, breathe, sleep, the gym, we just work through those injuries. Let's be honest. There's a lot of kinesio tape going on at the gym. There's a lot of braces. There's a lot of like ice packs. I mean, there's just a lot of rehab that goes into um, being, you know, in this fitness industry. So still being cautious about the, that injury and mindful and knowing that like you still need to rest it um, completely. Like, but if you have a shoulder issue, you can come and work legs. All, all the time. You can work legs, you know, and, and cardio and stuff, which is good and, and vice versa. Um, the next one on here is strengthens an area that you feel might be weaker than the rest of your body, which I think is good as well. Um, any other benefits that you guys kind of want to add to that or a couple, some thoughts? I think like coming back from injury too, you know, you do want to work that area that was injured because if you haven't been using it for, you know, such a long period of time, um, like when I was in high school, I had two different ankle surgeries. And so to be able to get back to like competitive sports and things like that, I had to work harder in that single, you know, joint area in order to almost catch back up to the rest of my body that was able to keep, you know, some form of routine and exercise going so I mean I think it has like we've said with most things has its time and place but um yeah how about you Jill um that's all starting I out you kind of liked those isolation exercises too like starting yeah. newer into fitness did you feel like maybe like the fatigue or like how you were stressing those muscles was a little bit different in the isolation exercises? I felt like with the isolation exercises, like I noticed like definition right away because I was just doing bicep curls or like hammer curls and like uh, tricep kickback. So like I noticed those definitions happening a lot, a lot faster, mm -hmm. like for my arms that's the only place I really noticed it and going into it like I didn't know what I was doing I did not know thought I could squat turns out I couldn't <laughs> <laughs> like my knees were like kind of like slightly like angling in and my toes were like out so like I just focused on like correcting that a little bit but I think doing isolation yeah it's just kind of concentrating on that one muscle for me starting out because I had no muscle nothing so mm -hmm. kind of broke it down like okay get the muscles in your arms and legs and then we can just kind of combine all of them since you're kind of <laughs> building up that building up my strength but yeah I think what we see a lot too in the gym and we've compared this and like other wellness talks that we've had that like you have the guys in the weight room I don't want to say guys members in the weight room um, just work like chest and back or buys and tries. Um, and so I think a lot of those exercises might be more isolated exercises because they can just focus on those two areas the best that they can. And then the next day they're working on a different muscle group, you know, together as well. Um, where when we were talking, we really prefer to do like a full body workout. So that's where those compound exercises come in. Cause without, for me to do a clean and press, I always add in a squat just because I, that's how it was always taught and rip, and that's just what I do. Um, and I like how it helps with my knees a little bit better, but impacts that, takes away some of the impact off my joints. But um, I think that that too is really important to think, like if you're going in and doing like full body workouts, you can't do like a full body isolated workout. You'd be there all day for one, and you'd be probably super sore the next day. At least you can work out and lift weights and do cardio five days a week, mm -hmm. five compound exercises because you're activating your entire body yeah. so and I know that you guys are probably sitting at home and being like okay compound versus isolated it makes sense like compounds using muscle many muscle groups isolated is using one and I gave you one example already with the isolated but just so that you guys can have some other examples I'm going to read some out and then you guys can kind of pipe in and see if I there was like 20 on this list I only listed like five on so um <clears throat> 
excuse me, but just other versions that we can kind of break down. So we're gonna start with those compound exercises. Again, those are the ones that use multiple muscle groups and joints at one time. Um, so we have a like barbell bench press is considered a compound movement. So using our bar on a bench and doing like that chest press movement. Um, we have a wide grip push up, so arms wide out to the side, which is very similar to that bench press just on your back. Um, deadlifts are another good compound movement. Pull ups are a good compound movement. And then our leg press. Um, any other compound movements that we want to put down there that might be more obvious that people do more at the gym? Well, no, isolated exercise <laughs> examples. You um, said ones that I had written down. <laughs> right, those are like the obvious ones that people would like kind of be able to visualize. Um, isolated exercises would be like a weighted calf raise, just using those calf muscles. Um, hamstring curls, you know, in our matrix, if you guys are familiar with the gym, um, we have that prone leg curl and we have the um, seated leg curl, just isolating those hamstrings. Um, <clears throat> standing um, barbell curls, which we already discussed about the bicep curls, um, cable downs, working those triceps, um, and then a one arm like preacher curl. For those of you, we have that um, actual bench kind of in there that you lean over to do like your preacher curls. This is just a single arm preacher curl. Again, isolating those biceps too. Um, these are very easy to turn into like compound movements, obviously, all the isolated ones. So, um, you know, anything that we want to add to those that are kind of like just obvious ones that I kind of missed? What do I got? I got like front raises. Just front raises. <laughs> one that I have written down. It's good. That's very good. So um, yeah, those are just like a couple, a couple examples of each one as you guys are kind of curious now to see like, you know, how we challenge you maybe not when you watch some of our workouts. Obviously, we told you that we really plan a lot more compound movements um, into our classes just because it's more efficient um, for the time slots that we have for our classes and to make them um, higher calorie burn for you too to get your results that you're looking for. Um, we also have a new class that's coming out, a demolition dumbbell class that's going to be headed your way um, with some strength training too. So that will be another good example where there are some isolation exercises in there, um, focusing just on strength, and then we do have some compounds mixed in as well. So um, yeah, this is kind of a short little wellness one. We don't really have too much. We can't really, you know, just run on and on with the uh, compound versus isolated exercises. So um, otherwise you guys would be very bored. But um, anything else you ladies would like to add before we kind of wrap it up? Cool. Pretty cut and dry, you guys. You know, many muscle groups used at one time, only one used at one time. So, um, you know, we kind of challenge you to think more about that when you're doing your workouts at home, if they're on your own. Um, Think about like, are you doing more compound exercise? Because that's what you're used to at home. Is it harder to kind of think about those movements and you just focus on isolation because that's what you know? Um, maybe post in our comments. Um, maybe you learned a lot of new stuff from this. Maybe you're like, this is just review because I read up on stuff like this all the time. You never know. <laughs> um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that. Uh, yes, hit the subscribe button and comment <laughs> below. Let us know what you uh um, how you like our classes, how you like the wellness talks, if there's anything else, other um, topics like this that you would like us to discuss, just so you can have some more information. Um, even if we've done one of the um, wellness talks before and you want some more in-depth conversation about it, feel free to comment there too. Like if you want us to talk more about protein, more about like our carbs and our nutrition side of things, we certainly could do that. Um, yeah, so just let us know. We hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Again, hopefully you are going to get out, get some sunshine, um, go for a walk, do more of our workout videos, get those views cranking up for us here, guys. Um, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We look forward to seeing you soon. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.